bring moving. And put back to an incident uh, when I was a kid. I can't remember exactly how old I was. Um, but I had a, a little bit of money in my pocket. back when uh, Nextels were really popular with the whole uh, bleep bleeps. So there was the first uh, first line of those phones that were coming out. Uh, I was at the store one day, like in the, in the corner store basically, and uh, this uh, guy or kid my age here, uh, I recognized him. I really don't remember now where I knew him from, but uh, I recognized him. Like he was um, known for something. He's from the neighborhood. Uh, maybe we were like friends and something some capacity, uh, even if it was just brief. Uh, but I was, or I, I think I still am, I'm, you know, a very trusting person. As long as you don't betray that trust, and, you know, I try to let people earn more trust. But this is a situation that definitely taught me a lesson. Uh, but this, this kid approached me and I recognized him, you know, said hello, caught up a little bit, uh, and then he proceeded to tell me that he had this, uh, this amazing deal, this, <laughs> this, uh, you know, something that's too good to be true, business opportunity, chance to make some legitimate money. Uh, he said that he was on his way uh, into the city, into Manhattan, to, that he had to connect, that was getting these next telephones, like the latest edition, uh, for cheap. Uh, basically, like, uh, like, we would be able to sell it for two to three times, maybe a little bit more, uh, what he was getting it for. He was saying, you know, he had his money together, and he asked me if I wanted to jump on it, you know, if I wanted to throw a couple hundred bucks into it. And I was like, you know, I know tons of people I could sell this phone to, and I know they'll pay, you know, this price. And if you can get it for this much, then I'm, I'll be making bank here, so let's do it, let's do it. So I went. Got two hundred dollars, gave it to him. And, uh, you know, made sure I had his number and everything. And uh, a couple of days go by, never hear anything. I try to call him, go straight to voicemail. Voicemail's full. <laughs> Just uh, disappeared. Wow. Did you fall for that? Like, <laughs> you just gave him, you didn't even know this guy. You just trusted him. But for, for me, it was that there was this opportunity. to me and definitely at that time felt like I could trust the kid. <clears throat> Didn't work out that way. 
came up in the context of brainstorming and the fact that it's like trying to get people to, to come together to, to do business together. Um, I think a lot of people, especially that grew up, uh, well, I don't know, you could probably grow up on, on all different spectrums of, uh, from poverty to middle class or whatever and still have these issues of, of trust how do you how do you trust them you want to you want to take an opportunity to make money uh, be independent and uh, invest uh, but if you don't have a lot of money you know the stock markets and things like that are you know, pretty much foreclosed to you so we you know, People are looking for these little hustles, you know what I mean? Whether it's, it's you know, buy this for this price and sell it for that price. Or, um, but, you know, there's always that cousin or there's that guy that, you know, always has this brilliant idea. And if you give him money, you probably never see it again. Uh, I think there's, a, you know, you probably know somebody just like that. So it's like, well, how do you, you know, go on operating in the world? Uh, you know, obviously you got to make better choices about who you trust, vet people a little bit better, or you know, figure, you know, figure out whether you have some type of recourse. Um, I think that's that's basic, but. Uh, you know, it's not always easy to do that. It's not always easy to do that. Uh, a lot of times we, you know, build bonds with people based on our experience with that person. If that person you know, always went on time, uh, always looked a certain way, you know what I mean? Or, uh, there, there could be so many factors that go into your own analysis based on your own personal beliefs. Uh, but yeah, so now we're, we're getting to a, a whole other realm of you know, how do we... How do you do business with people? And, and uh, are you taking a risk? Or is there a way to, you know, eliminate that risk or reduce it significantly? Um, you know, I've been hearing, or I, I feel like it's uh, it's like if you if you set up a business deal the right way. You don't need to trust anyone. You shouldn't. It shouldn't be a matter of uh, you trusting them. It should be more of the terms and the manner in which you're operating is clear and transparent. Um, and you know. More, what is clear and transparent? I mean, you know, the terms are are very under, like accessible. Like people can understand it. Those terms, um, you know, it's not filled with legalese um, or you know, confuse anything that's just that might confuse uh, a layman. Uh, you know, we we want things in simple terms, um, and then the the transparency is more of, okay, well, uh, if there's going to be money involved, what account is it going to be in? Um, you know, I, do I have access to see that account or audit that account? Uh, these types of things. Um, 
so uh, you, you can create these zero trust environments where you can do business um, and I think that's there's a lot of hype around that now uh, even though this isn't you know anything new there's just hype around it uh, with cryptocurrencies and uh, some of the embedded processes that they have but you know, this is like you can even think of it like corporate governance but on like a more uh, well I mean not even it, that's exactly what it is it's well, governance in, in general of how you operate uh, something like voting on things and, um, who's in charge of what uh, there's so many different factors it's all dependent on the business that you're doing as well So, you know, trust no one, verify, <laughs> have a solid, clear agreement, <laughs> understand, uh, try to anticipate, you know, what might go wrong, uh, and try to develop that. So, I'm going to try to do an experiment, um, you know, start off with some friends family kind of a deal and see if we can do a little uh, or create you know one of these zero trust environments where uh, we have a clear agreement where all the financials are transparent where it's you know the voting scheme is, is clear on how we make decisions and when those uh, decisions arise, what type of notice is given and how that notice is given, uh, and responsibilities that are laid out as to what these uh, what everyone is responsible for doing, basically. Uh, yeah, should be fun. So stay tuned. And remember, definitely not your lawyer, unless you've retained me. Uh, everything I've said here is uh, you know, for entertainment or educational purposes. And uh, you shouldn't act on any uh, type of legal matter without consulting an attorney that's competent and uh, admitted in a jurisdiction relevant to what you're dealing with. Preferably someone who has uh, a good amount of experience dealing with a similar situation. Uh, but we could talk more about how to choose an attorney another time. All right. Have a great day.